Okay, we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first feedback show, um, where your artwork is sent in to us, and we're going to uh, give you some advice and tips. For anyone new to uh, the channel, my name is Stephen Bradley. I'm Colin's son. Um, Dad, you're here too, aren't you? Say hello. I am. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, well, this is a uh, new idea that we came up with, uh, broadcasting live over YouTube. Um, but if you're listening back to a recording, then great, you can still pick up on all these tips. The idea is that we're going to hopefully do this every two weeks on a Wednesday, Wednesday night broadcast live, and obviously leave the recording up for uh, those of you that can't catch the live show. And before we were getting artwork sent into us because we have a membership with uh, our website, colinbradleyart.co.uk. And part of being a member of the website is that you get uh, feedback on your artwork. And previously, we were offering this feedback in the form of a PDF and some written instruction with some sort of annotations on your work. Now, that's all great, but we thought we could go one better and actually broadcast live over the web um, and offer you advice here on this format. And it also means that we're not restricted by uh, a document. We can um, we can actually talk a bit more about your work and also maybe take some questions if you have any. Um, we're quite new to this. It's taken us now an hour and 15 minutes <laughs> to get this going. Um, so it is all a bit new to us, but we're, we're getting there. And um, if you do send your questions, I'm not quite sure where they're going to pop up on my screen yet. Um, but yeah. So it's all a bit bit of a trial. This is the first show, um, but hopefully it's going to go well, Dad. I'm sure it will, Steve, with your expertise. <laughs> well. It's a good job it wasn't left to me, I tell you. It never got off the ground. But I'm good <laughs> at the artwork side, so I should be thankful for that. Yes, well, there would be no feedback show without you. <laughs> it would be. It would just be me. Um, it would just be me talking about the artwork, and I'm nowhere near qualified to give any feedback. This is this is certainly your bag, but I'm giving you the opportunity to talk to people live. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, I think there's a chat window here that I can pull up in case you do send anything. Yeah, I've got that up. So I don't know how this works yet. But if you do have a question, you find that there is a chat option, then, um, yeah, give it a go. See if it works. Um, so let's start off with the, the first topic for the show. Uh, it's actually not feedback, <laughs> strangely enough. Um, I know it's a feedback show. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, a picture that's sent into us. Now, this is a, a photograph. I'm going to scroll down to it here. This was sent into us by uh, John. And um, another service that we have for members of Colin Bradley Art is that you can send us your reference photos, and we can give you some indication uh, on the colors that you need for the picture, the pastel pencils you would use. Now, we can only give you a guideline. Dad, do you want to talk, talk a bit about I this? I will. I'll take over from here. Okay. Um, when you look at this great picture, it really is a great photograph of a Labrador, you see that uh, it is cool in colour. That means it's bluish, you know. It, a lot of uh, pictures could either have a, a bias of one way or another. It could be an earthy bias. It could be a, um, sometimes you have an orange tinge to these things. And what is important if you're following a photograph like that, you follow it to the letter. Don't try to make things up. I know I talk about artistic license, but you've got to follow the colours that you see and the tones that you see on the photograph. Now, I said it was cool. It would be. I'd be using the white. Uh, certainly, if you look at the top of the head, you see it's quite light. So that sheen needs to be put in almost immediately. So you put that in using the white. And the other areas, like the, the areas um, between the eyes, is a good uh, reference here. Now, that would need to have um, white in it and then a light grey. Because we're using cool colours, and you can see the, the chart here, and you can follow me if I say it's 230. A 230 is a cool grey. That, yeah, that would go uh, on top of the white for those that area to the right uh, of the centre of the head, if you see what I mean. You can see it there. And then you would need also to use the other cool uh, medium grey, medium cool grey, which was 233. Three. And that can go on top of it. Now, by the time you get to that, you're getting quite close to the colour involved there. 
but I would use a blue. Now, I would suggest there are two blues you could use here. One is the 149, and the other is the 157, but I kind of like the 149 here. You've got to put that bluish tinge in, and I'd put it in on then at that stage. You, you, you've got to wait until you've got the greys in before you can put that in. Now, on the medium colour, that is the area between the eye and the left ear. You see it's darker. Mm. Now, there, I, would, I wouldn't worry about the white at all. You'd just put the cool grey in, 230. Then you could use, on top of that, you could use the 233. Now, automatically, that makes it slightly darker, you see, then, because we haven't used the white at all. And... Then there's another color you can see there, uh, and that is 169. Now, 169, together with the 149, which I mentioned earlier, would mm -hmm. give you that lovely bluey hue to it. And you then probably have to darken that a little bit. And if you were going to darken it, then you would probably use 181 as, as a darkening agent. But you wouldn't put too much of that on. That would have to be uh, filtered in, because otherwise it would be too dark. Now, the area inside the ear, which is a great uh, example here, you, you forget the white, you forget the, the, the uh, light grey. You go straight in there with the cool grey, medium grey, which is 233. This one here, yep. Yep. That goes straight into it and make it, you don't want to press hard because the darker colours we're going to put on also have to register but you do need to keep to get it as smooth as you can once that's in you then use the 181 and the black for the first time you use the black and that will give you that richness now you can also use a little bit of the blue you can also use a bit of the 169 if you feel you want to all of those colors can be put into that but those colors would give you those, those are the base colors i would use for the animal but there's going to be others. Uh, many, many times I tell people, all I'm going to do is give you an idea of the colours you're going to be needing. But you, you're bound to, to need more colours. And you can only do that as you proceed with a picture. Now, mm -hmm. the eye is interesting here. You, you're going to use the white, obviously, for the highlight. But you'd need a, the grey, the light grey I was talking about, the 230, that could be put in where you see the ochre as a start hmm. on top of that i would put ivory on top of that you could use either the 186 or the 187 it wouldn't really matter you'll find the 186 is a bit richer and then on the rim of the eye um on top of the 186 you would then put the 283 and possibly a bit of 177 now these are colors that would work as far as the pupils concerned you go straight in there with in this particular case you see it's quite a light pupil isn't it it's not dark mm. so having seen that i would put the light gray in there then i would put two double three and then just a little touch of the 181 which is the uh Payne's gray mm. but there's going to be other colors these are just base colors i'm going to give you and i don't always only give you those base colors but that wow. will work very well wow it goes to show the amount of colors that can be used in mm in building up the colors and building up the tones that you need. Absolutely. And you know, if we look at the nose just very, very briefly, all the colors I've mentioned you're going to need, but you remember I did mention uh, a 177. A 177 in the, the darkening the eye itself. Now that could be used um, instead of the blue. You know, I told you to, when to use the blue hmm. in, in the fur. Well, you would use the brown in that situation. Put the grays on just the same. But mm. the brown would be added, and then you get a lovely tone and tint to the brown nose you've got there. So that's something unique to the Labradors. They have a instead of a black nose, they have a, a slightly browny nose. Well, that one does anyway. Yeah. Wow. And now that would really give you a really good start, uh, John. Okay. Well, that's that's loads of yeah, loads of really good information there. So. Yeah, I hope that helps, John, and anyone else um, there. We we do get quite a few people. Um, sort of struggling or or just sort of not 100 percent sure on the colors that they need because a black animal isn't black it's got no. these blue tones or or even warm tones depending on the picture that you're you're looking at That's so there's right. a lot of lot of other colors that need to be going in there as well hmm. oh yes um, there is be i mean i just men mentioned what um seven or eight colors there but uh, something like that i would expect to use at least 15 20 maybe 
Wow. But maybe not as many as that. No, 15 probably, looking at it again. But there mm. are colours that you don't you don't think about until the picture progresses. Then you've mm. got to use your intuitive senses to, to pick up a colour. that Because you're following a good, very good reference picture there. So you don't have to make too much up. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture. Let's just have another little look at that. Yeah, it's a great, stunning picture. Really nice. So, uh, yeah, John's going to have some fun with that picture, I'm sure. I'm looking forward to seeing it at the end. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to some uh, actual feedback now. So we've had a few pictures sent in to us by Keith. I'm just going to scroll down to those now. Uh, first one we're looking at here is a rooster. Um, so this rooster is available to draw on uh, colinbradleyart.co.uk. And yeah, your picture here is on the left-hand side. And we've put that side by side with Keith's picture as well. Um, so nice attempt here by Keith. Yes, it is. It's a very good effort. And it's a good thing to do. People question whether I should put my picture in, but it's the only way I can give you an example and so that you can see um, just what is needed. The, the thing that struck me immediately, I looked at the picture, was the grass and the earth um, areas. They tend to be a bit contrived. And right. how do you make them... Not contrived, not contrived. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not easy, folks. It, but there's lots and lots and lots of examples of this kind of thing on the website. So it, it would be probably pay you to practice what you see on that picture, on my picture, on some spare paper. But also look at other things I've done, and you'll find it's it's in the it's the action of the colour, uh, the, um, the the colored pencils that you're using and the way you you manipulate them it's very difficult to explain to you that's why i use the lo lots of reference in uh, examples mm. it's easier to show you rather than to uh, actually tell you what it is but that's the one thing that struck me the rooster's great it really is the thing about um, the black we were talking about black just now when I, we were talking about the, the ear and how important black is well look at the the rooster's tail there if you look at the right Keith's picture does lack a little bit of oomph for want of a better word you need some more depth in that now what I would do if I was Keith now I'd get that picture back out again and I would do 181 into that very dark um, blue area mm -hmm. it's easy to see because if you're looking at my ref reference picture you can see that mm, yeah you can on yeah. top of that um, 181 you put some black and right. that would give you the richness that I've got there and the impact that would make would be enormous it's right. also of course on the top of the legs as well you can see the same thing although yeah. that's, a, that's a little bit darker but you know I think what it is sometimes um, people fear black they think oh yeah, once I put that and it's going to really make it uh, uh, overpowering and it's true but it's got to be done Mm. And once you put that in, you'd also find that the roosters, the, the area running down the back from the head, you can see, if you look at mine, you see how rich it is. And if you look at Keith, you'll see it's a little bit subdued. The reason for that is there's too much base color put on. Right. And what happens when the, when the light base colors go on, and when you subsequently put the rich colors, the, the 187s and the 283s on top of that, those rich colors are weakened, are dampened down, in other words. Mm. So what's, what's okay. the answer? Well, the answer is not so much base color. Restrict that base color. And you can lift some of the color off um, just by dabbing uh, a putty rubber. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. You could do that. And it's worth trying that. It would work in this case because mm. you, take, you take some of that base color off with it. But it wouldn't all, all, together, it wouldn't all come away. Mm. And, then and then you're quite right. You put the 187, 283 on top of that would, would enrich it, make a big difference. Mm. Good. So there's a few good. tips, but I think they're good ones. Yeah, fantastic. So moving on to the next one by Keith. This is the chimpanzee, one of the most recent ones. So Keith jumped straight on that and, uh, and done a really good job of this one too. He has, yes. There, there is only one area there that I think that could be improved. If you look under the chin, directly under the chin, okay, oh that area, it looks a bit like he's got a, a spiky beard. I see, now, yeah, yeah. Now, why does mine not look like that? You see, if you look mm. at mine, 
Yeah, see, why is that? <laughs> well, what it is, it's the way, it's either depth underneath the chin itself. Put your yeah. arrow over that, that point, Steve, just under the chin on my picture. That's it, exactly there, yeah. You see that depth that I've got? With a mm -hmm. little bit of light underneath it. Now, it's only subtle. Just that bit but, there. But look at the difference it's made. When you look at that, you it doesn't look like a beard. Yeah, I see. It's giving that depth of field, isn't it? It's to see, oh. say that that is behind, effectively behind. And you wouldn't see that. You wouldn't probably pick that up. I mean, I can imagine, Keith, looking at that thing, oh, there's something not right about it, but I don't know what it is. You've got to, but once it's pointed out to you, then you realize and you see, ah, yes, that's mm. it. That's the reason. So, but I mean, I've got to say it's brilliant. I mean, this is again, black animal again, isn't it? My goodness. Yeah. Me. Yeah, it's People. true. And uh, the only other thing I would say that the black could be just a little blacker, you know, there's the, the richness. Once again, there's probably a little bit too much under color there, base color. Right. Especially on the shoulder and down the, uh, on the right hand side of Keith's needs a little bit more oomph. But I can understand why it, 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 it's very, very difficult to do. Mm, but black is tricky, yeah. Very, very good. You know, I mean, I'm being critical and that's my job to help you because, uh, you know, it certainly can be um, very difficult when you're trying to work something out. So why, you know, I, I know there's something wrong, but I don't know what it is. Mm. Well, you do now. Okay, good. Let's move on to the final one then we've got from Keith. This is the Prowling Tiger now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stunning picture. I mean, uh, it's a bit blurry, the picture that I think Keith's taken, so it's not 100% uh, no, clear. It's a little bit blurry, but you can see, see he's done a good job. It is, and it's a great, great, uh, again, this is one of my favourite pictures, and it's been a favourite of everybody that's done it. And again, a very good picture. I, I can't really... The, the only thing I would pick up on is the grass. In the, can you lift it up just a little bit? Mm. That's it. Great, Steve. That's great. You see, it's this is not easy to do. In fact, I would say it's really very, very difficult to do. So, what he's done is is reasonable, but to what you need to look at there is more of an impressionistic picture. And what I would do is make it darker. If you just put some dark in there some uh, I would use a very dark brown if you've got soft pastel that would be great if you haven't got soft pastel you just have to use the side of the darker pencils but it does need to be darker and if you just darken that uh, a touch or two it would look more like the picture that I've um, I've shown mm. there because you know with the dark surround the dark black is coming out of the night and he's got to that's got to the impression that I would like to to give but the, it's very good the the back is particularly good the way that melts into the the background color mm. uh, that that really is pretty pretty it's impressive. really got the contrast of the stripes as well um you yes. know the, the darkness on the light very good the yes particularly the face and that uh, left uh, mm. the leg on the left hand side is mm. absolutely stunning and i'm sure uh Keith would be thrilled with that. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be if I was doing that, you know, for, you know, for starting out. I mean, what, what amazes me is that people do these pictures, they, they, and they're kind of like almost professional pictures and they're, they're copying them and making a stunning job of them. It, it always amazes me how brilliant our members are mm -hmm. being able to, they just go for it. We've actually had a question come in. Um, someone's watching us at the moment. Um, I'm going to pronounce the name wrong, so I'm so sorry. Uh, Kostoya, Kostoya, K-O-S-T-Y-A. Um, they ask, background also very detailed on your picture. How do I know that I should stop working on a background? As for me, I never know when to stop working on it. Right. I've got a really good answer to that question. A background is simply a support act. Can you go to the chimp? Go up mm -hmm. to the chimp. This is a good one. It's a support act. What you mustn't do with any uh, background is it mustn't overtake the picture. It mustn't look better than the picture. It's a support act only. Now, in the case of my, if you look at my chimp particularly, when I did that, I thought, well, what colours do I use? And, I, and I'm sure you've already seen the picture. It's, it's, it's been on, um, on the member site for a little while now. And I actually say I had no idea what I was going to do with that. 
But how I think about it is that I look at the colors in the animal and you can see that I've got the pinks and the, and the uh, other grays into it. But when I did that, I had added some greens, which is no green in the animal, but you have to think about it's in a jungle. So you have to have the atmosphere of that. But the idea is to make it as a support act for the uh, chimp. Now, if you're doing a, if you're doing a realistic kind of background, which to be honest, you shouldn't be doing, not really. Uh, if you've seen the elephants recently, which was the last picture we put up, you see, although you look at that picture and think, well, that's very realistic. Actually, it isn't. If you piece that together, it's quite impressionistic. But the idea was the elephants are the most important. They must stand away. Everything behind it, everything in the background, everything is a support act. And how do you know when to stop? You don't. Experience will tell you that. Oh, well done. Well done, that man. Look there at you this. Go. <laughs> you Just see what I mean? Yeah. Look, at, look, at, look at it and, and tell me how much realist, realism there is in that. Perhaps in the trees there, there might have been. I had to be a little bit more precise with those uh, two, two lots of trees. But the, if you look at that picture, the first thing you see is the elephants. And then you think, oh, oh what a nice background. What a nice back cloth. It is. Mm. But you see how important, though, a, a picture is like that. So when did I know when to stop? Well, if you got to, if you look at the picture, you look at the picture on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, um, on the member site, you'll see how I struggle with it to start with. But in that struggling, I produce what I consider one of the best ones I've done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it is keeping the subject is the main focus, isn't it? I think if you're focusing too much on the background, then you'll lose um, yes. Yes. the attention. Yes. And and to be honest, in answer really to the question, it's practice, 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 practice. But don't try to be too clever. Mm. Try to be um, supportive of your subject. There's some fantastic pictures coming on the member site. I'm thrilled with them, and I think people are going to go nuts when they see them this year, and uh, which uh, illustrate these points that I'm making. And I, if you follow those and uh, adhere to the rules and the techniques, I tell you, uh, you'll by the end of this year you'll have the answers to some of those questions. Fantastic. Well, I think that's a really good subject to end on this uh, this time. And uh, if you want to find out more about joining as a member and obviously have the capability to send us your artwork and we'll feature it on the show, um, then you can go to colinbradleyart.co.uk and click on the join page at the top. And, um, and yeah, we'll feature your artwork. So we're hoping that this is uh, going to go down well. Um, as always, let us know what you think in the comments so we can help improve this show. And um, the idea is, like I say, we're going to do this every two weeks if we can on a Wednesday night. And uh, if you're listening back to the recording, watching back, then uh, thanks again for watching. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you can. And um, we'll leave it there, shall we, Dad? Absolutely. I've enjoyed it enormously. I'm looking forward to the next fortnight. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Bye for now. Bye.